I have not picked up the camera in one month and I have not uploaded a YouTube video in even longer than that. A lot has happened, but in ways not a lot has happened. I did not have any plans to film today. It is Tuesday, November 28th right now. It's 10.30 in the morning. Um, I just finished getting ready to go to get my hair done. I'm getting my hair done in an hour. But I figured I would just pick up the camera and start where I am at today. Things are a little disorganized in my life right now. I have a lot of footage that I filmed up until maybe two weeks out from my show. And then from two weeks out till show day, I kind of stopped filming altogether. I have very little footage from my actual show day. And then I obviously have not filmed in the four weeks since, since this is the first time I'm picking up the camera. So depending on when I upload this video, I am going to still try to upload the footage that I have filmed um, just because I've taken the time to film it so I will share that and then I am going to sit down probably tomorrow and film an actual chatty video giving you guys an update on how prep went, how my show day went, and how the last weeks, the last four weeks post show have gone for me. It's overwhelming to me to feel like I have to get like four other videos edited and uploaded before I can start filming again so I figured I would just pick up the camera and start a little vlog today. Thank you so much for coming back and for watching. Um, I can't wait to keep filming more content for you guys so let's just get into this. Okay guys. Here is the seven Dragon Balls. Hopefully seven. I ordered all seven. But so I don't know anything about Dragon Balls. Here is number five. Is that number five? Um, six. So explain to me Dragon Balls. So in the show, the original show, this is what everyone was trying to get. What show? Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball. You collect all seven, you get the wish from the dragon Shenron. I see. And they were like the main focus of the plot for the first bit. I think this is number seven. And where do you find the dragon ball? They're just scattered all around the world. And there's different kinds, but this is the original one. I wanted these since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. these and look they're nice good size too, because they sell really small. I could have paid like 20 bucks and I could have got Cheaper ones this ones, big. Yeah. But I've been wanting these for a bit. I should have got a display box for them. I was going to say, how are you going to display them? The one star one. So we have one star, two star, three star, four star, five star, five star. Two five stars? No, this one's six star, right? And seven star. There's a peek at what I am eating currently this is a actually leftover from my smoothie i had for breakfast um carrot mango orange ginger i believe that's all that's in there and then i made this soup kind of stew the other day i love this chickpea lentil soup so much it's so easy to make it's super filling and it just tastes so good and it's so easy to make and it's nice and nutritious so this is kind of, this is my second meal of the day. Kind of lunch, it's like lunch number one. <laughs> He can understand different things too. Yeah. Family expectation meaning. So that is for good. Oh yeah, you question it, but then it's value to yeah. people. So like, so 
so many good things about me, mm -hmm. even though he trains it like she just like has so much, you know, yeah. she's smart. <laughs> It's 7.50 right now. I'm just having my breakfast. I showed you guys last evening I was making this. <clears throat> so I have this veggie quiche here, if you can see. This is carrots, kale, onion, and tomato. It's so good. I didn't put any cheese in it this time because we don't have any cheese. So just um, whole eggs, egg whites, and I use a little bit of heavy cream because we have cream that needs to get used up, but I would typically just use either nut milk or low-fat milk. And then my sweet potato hash, which is just sweet potato and onion. They got a tiny bit burnt. I did use a little bit of um, white, white wine vinegar on the pan for these, and they turned out really good. And then I've been having a cup of tea in the morning without any like cream or sugar or anything. So typically like an herbal tea. This morning I'm having this immunity tea so this is lemon with echinacea it has some ginger in it and some zinc it says as well so i just steep the tea bag for like three to five minutes i try not to over steep it i find that can make the taste quite like bitter and then i'm going to add this is 400 mils i steeped it in 400 mils and i'm going to add another 100 mils of cold water so it's kind of just like a warm tea so i can drink it relatively quickly with my breakfast i try to drink it before my breakfast it's been helping with my digestion a little bit my digestion has not been great the entire month so i'm still working on that um, but having some tea in the morning has been helping i'm going to eat breakfast and then we are leaving at 8 15 we're driving over to um drop johnny's brother off for a an interview today and then we're going to really quickly run into the costco business center basically i just need to grab oats over there i might grab more fruit depending on what they have and then we'll pick him up and we'll come home it's about a 25 minute drive to get there so quick breakfast and then we'll see what else gets up to, i get up to today i think this is the first time you're also seeing my hair after getting it done i don't think i filmed anything after yesterday it ended up taking about two and a half hours so not bad we did go quite a bit lighter this time and we didn't do like any root melt so you can kind of see like the individual highlights on the top this time so we'll see i'm very happy with the color um but i'll show you it more when the lighting's a little bit better We got this at Costco today. This is the biggest cantaloupe I've ever seen and they were selling them um, per item, like not by weight, so we had to get one. It was cheap too. Ate my tasty like Greek chicken bowl and then I was still hungry and craving like something sweet so I did have a bowl of pumpkin spice Cheerios with some cashew milk, that was very good. And quickly threw some makeup on and thought I would sit down and just get into my post-show thoughts and talk about what my bikini prep experience was like. Since I feel like this vlog, there's not a whole lot going on. Um, so I might as well just sit down and talk about it. I am hoping to not ramble on forever, which is hard. That's something I tend to do. And I also, I wanna be mindful about the thoughts that I'm sharing. I think the fact that it has been a month now will hopefully make it easier for me to talk about it in like a more rational sense um whereas immediately post show i think i was quite emotional i also have like quite a bit of a headache today which is annoying because i've been eating well and sleeping well and trying to drink water so i don't know what is giving me an afternoon headache i kind of just want to wrap up this whole experience by sitting down and quickly chatting with you guys about what my experience was and what my thoughts are post show so let's quickly get into it what was my 
experience as a first time bikini competitor um, without making it too complicated. I would say all in all, my experience was very good um, and I gained a lot from the experience. Whether or not I would want to go through that again, I am still undecided. Initially, like as during peak week, I was like, yes, I want to do this again. And then immediately post show, I was like, I don't think I'll ever do this again. So it's still something that I'm unsure about. But the overall experience, I would say up until four weeks out, I enjoyed the experience. I felt like it was challenging me, but it wasn't incredibly unsustainable to that point. The last four weeks of prep were very difficult for me. While I was in that moment, I was trying hard to obviously not focus on how hard it was and not constantly be telling myself, oh, this is really hard, this is really uncomfortable. But in the reality of it is that it was really hard. For four weeks, I had no energy. I had no interest in anything. Um, like I wasn't getting any enjoyment from anything. I had no patience for anyone. I really like struggled with just even feeling like any emotion whatsoever because I was so just drained and so focused on just having to do what I had to do to get through the day. So from the four weeks out point is when things like started to get quite difficult. My cardio um, at its peak was two 70 minute sessions, which is absolutely insane. And then I was still getting 10,000 steps and I was still doing a workout. My workouts eventually went to 50 minute workouts and then during peak week they were only 40 minutes. But prior to that, they were taking me over an hour, sometimes even two hours to get my workouts done. Five days a week, still trying to push the intensity. My strength in the gym was gone. My enjoyment of working out was gone. So things got difficult. And my food continued to go down, of course, because we were trying to lose weight. And I think all in all, a big like takeaway for me is just that I do not have a mu enough, I do not have enough muscle, I did not have enough muscle. So getting really lean for stage when you don't have a lot of muscle is difficult because you just have to get smaller and smaller and so much smaller in order to see the little muscle that you have. And then the reality of cutting body fat that quickly is that you're likely going to sacrifice some muscle mass. So I definitely think I lost muscle in the process. The last four weeks, we were probably losing about two pounds a week. And I was already lighter than I had been in a very, like in my adult life pretty much. So the end was aggressive and going into the prep, I wanted to do whatever it took to look my best. I wasn't too concerned with being sustainable, with being healthy. I kind of accepted that the reality of this sport is that you have to, things get to a place where they're not healthy. And so definitely those four weeks out, I was in that space that was not healthy. And at that time, I was only consuming bodybuilding content. It didn't feel like an abnormal place to be. I understood why I was there. I wanted to be there. And so that's like, I was very accepting of it in that moment. And I definitely saw myself doing this again in the future um, in that moment. And then, <clears throat> sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought, but basically I didn't have a lot of muscle. So we had to be aggressive. We ended up, I lost a lot of body fat. I think we ended up losing 25 pounds within the five month period of prep. So by the end it was aggressive. And I'll, like I would just, I was doing my cardio, I was doing my posing, I was getting my meals ready. My meals were small, I was eating the same thing every day. I stopped having any free foods or meals like eight weeks out, so things were quite restricted. Basically the only thing I had that I was enjoying was my coffee, not that I wasn't enjoying my food. I loved all of my meals, but they were tiny. And it's just crazy to me how the body works when you're like literally starving yourself everything tasted so good and I just like was like licking my meal prep containers clean because I was so hungry and it just tasted so good to me and so in that moment I definitely was having like some disordered thoughts around food just being like when I'm post show like all I need to do is eat fruit and rice cakes and like that's all I'm craving I want oatmeal that's all I want that's all I'm gonna eat definitely post show that changed so I mean all in all I had a good experience 
The actual show day and peak week were not my favorite. Peak week I found to be really stressful. I felt confused about like exfoliating and shaving and I just felt very overwhelmed with all the things I had to do waxing, getting hair done, all of that was a little bit stressful for me. We had to travel to get to the show, only like a three hour drive, but still having to pack everything up, packing food, it was just all in all like not that enjoyable for me. And then the actual like day before the show and day of the show, I didn't love either because I hated the spray tan. I was so uncomfortable, standing there naked was uncomfortable. I did not like being freezing cold. I did not like having to baby this spray tan. I've never had a spray tan before either. I just didn't like feeling uncomfortable, feeling like I couldn't go to the bathroom, feeling like I couldn't sit down. And at that point, I mean, you're feeling pretty shitty. So all in all, I didn't love the like getting ready process either. I felt stressed about doing my hair. I felt stressed about doing my makeup. It just felt overwhelming. And it's definitely that feeling of like, all of this work has led to this like, very minuscule moment and you place a lot of like expectation on the moment. Not that I was ever really concerned about how I was going to place. I was happy with how I looked, but I also wasn't like blown away with how I looked. There was moments where I liked the way I looked and moments where I didn't. And there was a lot of discomfort that came with looking that way. So really I kind of just wanted it to be over, which is not great. The actual show being on stage was fun. Again, it wasn't like, the most enjoyable thing I had ever done, but it was fun. I liked the experience. I liked getting to have my bikini on, but I was also somewhat uncomfortable in my bikini too. And there's just, it's just a lot to manage, especially when you are at that, like, I guess technically I wasn't depleted at that point. We had had a ton of carbs and stuff, but just exhausted, like physically and mentally, I was exhausted. So I ended up getting second in the debut category of people who had never competed in the WNBF before. And then I got fifth in my height class um, overall. So not bad placings. I was competing against some people who had done many shows. I know one of the girls I was with, this was her 10th show. So people had done many shows. I think my takeaway really though was like, okay, like the placings were good, they're whatever, but that was like, so much work and so much sacrifice for what? And it also cost a lot of money. Um, just kind of for what purpose I like, obviously wasn't super competitive, um, not not super competitive, but it wasn't like I did amazing or something. And I know not everybody's going to like, not everybody can get first, but I think had I placed first, that would have given me like more validation to do this again. And I know that probably sounds like a bad thing to say, but I think the reality is for how much time and effort and dedication this sport requires and just the sacrifice, like I was irritable in all of my relationships. I was not good at my job at that time. Um, for all of it, for all of what it takes to do this sport just for fun and as a hobby, which is what it is for the majority of people. I think even if you're competitive as a pro, it's still to some degree a hobby. Um, but it just definitely gave me that step back to be like, is this something I wanna do? Is this worthwhile for me? So with all of that being said, quickly, I wanna to touch on my post-show experience. I'm not going to ramble on. So all I'm going to say is that post-show was difficult. I had wished that I had more support from my coach. However, I also think that it was just an experience that I had to go through and I had to get through. And a lot of it was stuff that I had to do on my own. I, the people around me, as much as they could be supportive, could not understand just like what I was feeling. About two weeks post-show, I felt so much more like myself and I just felt like I had my personality back, I had patience back, I had enjoyment in about, like I was enjoying things in my life and I was excited about things. Like I just had energy to actually be a human being. But things definitely went from like, a hundred to zero so quickly. I went from doing all this cardio and working out consistently to like not having a workout plan. My coach had still given me a meal plan to follow and cardio to do that I very quickly fell off of. I very quickly got sick. It was just this like big kind of crash at the end of all of this. I ate a ton of food. Honestly, my digestion has not been great for the entire last month. Um, I went from eating 
basically the exact same food for at least eight weeks prior to my show day to then eating whatever I wanted the whole day post-show then trying to get back on track and then you're just in the bottom of this cut where you are literally starving your body wants you to eat more everything everything going on is just contributing to you eating more and then of course that has an emotional effect that you just feel a lot of guilt and shame around food and just a lot of disordered eating behaviors occur at that time and as much as like you can see other people talking about their reverse experience and body positivity and accepting the fact that you gained weight it's also just knowing that like physically it wasn't great for my body to like have been that restricted that depleted to then just eat whatever i want i know that like as far as my electrolytes and things go that can be quite hard on your body to go from such extremes and then of course there's hormones and emotions and so many things involved but the post-show experience was hard when it came to food um otherwise i've really just taken the month of november to kind of catch my breath and take a step back my mental health has been really good in november even when i have had days where i know i've eaten way more than i should um i haven't felt a ton of guilt i haven't felt the pressure to want to restrict i don't even want to lose body fat right now i'm about 10 pounds heavier than i was the day of my show, which is probably about five true pounds of fat variation. Of course, there's so many things involved in that, muscle mass, body fat, water retention, sodium, things like that. So I haven't been taking my weight too seriously these past four weeks either. We went on vacation and ate whatever we wanted for a week. So things have kind of been very different in november i would say on average i've done about three workouts a week i stopped doing two a day cardio immediately <laughs> i now i'm doing some cardio i'm still trying to get 10,000 steps i mean being sick really forced me to put the brakes on and then now i'm just kind of getting back to figuring out what i want and so with that being said i did choose to stop working with my coach this month just because i wasn't following the advice that she was giving me anyways and I didn't feel like I was hearing from her what I wanted to hear. And I honestly wasn't willing to change what I wanted to hear, which by that I mean, I just, I wasn't interested in doing this super rigid reverse. I wasn't interested in staying on a meal plan. I wanted to focus on eating food that was gonna nourish my body. But I also knew that like, I just, I had to figure out how I could feel satisfied when it came to food as well. That's definitely still a journey that I am on. When I went into prep, I did not want to come out of prep blaming prep or blaming bodybuilding for any of the negatives that I experienced. I don't blame bodybuilding. I don't blame the sport. I knew what I was getting into. I think had someone told me at the beginning, you know, now's not the time. You don't have enough muscle. You should not do this. I would not have listened. I would have been argumentative and I would have done it anyways. So I'm not saying that prep is the problem. Um... I think if you want to do a bikini competition, that's amazing. I think having physique goals is amazing. That's something I've always kind of had and can very much relate to. However, I do feel like I have been in this place of yo-yoing for so long. And I think it, in a lot of ways, going through prep and then into like a bulk and building phase is just kind of another word for yo-yoing especially as an amateur, as a woman, a natural athlete. There's just a lot of factors involved, involved that makes the prepping experience very brutal and that's just the reality of it. And so I'm not gonna blame prep. I don't think prep ruined my body. I do think that being on a very restrictive routine and diet definitely is not sustainable. And so there comes a point where that motivation is gone and you lose those things that were keeping you at that body fat, you stop restricting and you kind of let go. And there's a lot of physical and psychological factors that make you kind of rebound in the other direction. And so then it's easy to blame prep because it was this super restrictive lifestyle. However, I knew what I was getting into. I think I could have approached it in a different way. If I were to do it again, I might approach it differently, but I'm not gonna shit on uh, bodybuilding and bikini bodybuilding. Um, that's just what my experience has been and I wanted to share as openly and honestly as I can. Hopefully this all kind of makes sense and that I can kind of, you can get a sense of what my experience was and how I'm feeling. I don't really feel like dragging this out a ton longer. My hope for the future right now is to, as I said, focus on 
being healthy, continue to strive to be the best version of myself and lead, live a lifestyle that I'm proud of and that I feel leads by example. I want to help other people on their fitness journey. I want to help people overcome the barriers that they're facing on their fitness journey. I want to work as a personal trainer and work as a coach. And so I think it's important that the lifestyle I'm living is reflective of what I think is healthy and is inspiring to other people. So that is kind of where my mind is at right now, but I'm not setting any specific goals. I'm not making any um, decisions right now. I'm going to enjoy December. I want to continue to prioritize my physical and mental health throughout the month of December, but I'm gonna enjoy the holiday season. And then come the new year, I will kind of sit down and think more intentionally about what my actual like concrete goals are for the new year. So that is kind of just a little update about all things bikini prep. Again, if you have any questions or any comments, let me know down below. I would love to answer them. If there is anything else regarding prep that you want to see as well, let me know and I will consider making more videos about uh, individual parts of prep more specifically in a more structured format where I'm not just rambling, but that's kind of all for now. I am actually gonna go do some studying right now and I will check in with you guys later and we'll see if I get up to anything interesting. It is definitely getting dark. We, oh, it's only 4.07, so we've only been filming for like 23 minutes, so not awful, but, and I'm gonna drink a ton of water because I'm feeling very dehydrated. Thursday. I'm just sitting down studying my um, ACE personal trainer certificate. I am slowly making my way through. I'm finally starting to make more progress this past month now that I'm not on prep and I've made myself like a pretty detailed study guideline so I'm trying to stick to this as much as possible. This morning we, Johnny and I, we're up pretty early. We went to the gym. I did a fairly heavy session today. I did incline, low incline, chest press, pull-ups, some lat pull-downs just kind of in combination with my pull-ups, rear delt flies, and then a super set of biceps and triceps. Now that I don't have a coach, Johnny's kind of helping me put some more structure back in place for my life. Um, I'm not good at coaching myself. I really struggle even though I know the information and I am obviously still continuing to learn and to grow as an individual and as a coach but even though I know the information when it comes to myself I just overthink and overanalyze like crazy so Johnny is helping giving me some structure so we're really focusing on some strength right now and just kind of having fun in the gym so that workout was really good then I did 20 minutes on the Stairmaster still trying to maintain cardio I think cardio is so important it gives me so much energy it's good for my mental health and as I am continuing to learn through this course and as I know as a nurse and we just know because we hear it all the time cardiovascular exercise is so important for overall health quality of life reducing the risk of disease and longevity of life so many there's so many positive benefits to cardio my five minutes is up so i did 20 minutes of cardio and then we went into the pool for a little bit afterwards went in the hot tub uh, walked around a bit in the cool pool finished off in the hot tub and then we got home i had my post-workout snack which you will have seen and then we are planning to have some pasta for dinner tonight so I will share that with you guys and I want to make some sort of like healthy dessert. Not the cutest meal but tasty. Sweet potato, carrot, chicken, and spinach. Uh, I cooked this in the slow cooker the other day. I can't remember if I showed you guys that. Um, so it has like some tomato in it as well and it's seasoned like a curry. I put some frozen spinach on top, uh, some pre-cooked chicken in my meal, and it's perfect, perfect little lunch for me.
Let me quickly show you my meals that I packed. So we have three servings of my sweet potato and carrot kind of stew with chicken. One, two, three. And then I packed three containers of sweet potato with my vegetable quiche that I made. That's for my breakfast. And I have two nights of chicken, rice, and veggies. This is frozen. That's going to be my dinner. And two nights of Greek yogurt with this has mango and raspberry because we were just about out of our mixed berry. And then I have one container with some diced up apple in there, but you can't really see it. But I have an apple a day. I will maybe actually bring a couple bananas with me as well. I've got my uh, protein powder here and I have four or five everything bagel rice cakes that I'm gonna have. So that's kind of all the food that I have packed up for the next three days of work. So I meant to film some clips of the dinner we ate. We made pasta for dinner. We had a mushroom and zucchini pasta with some shrimp with a cream sauce that was made primarily out of Greek yogurt with lots of garlic. Uh, we put some paprika, some cayenne pepper. It was very good um, with some spaghetti noodles. It was tasty, spaghetti pasta. <laughs> And yeah, it was delicious and we ate it so fast. And I also made a salad to go along with that and that was really good, we both enjoyed it. But I did not film any clips of that. I made a small batch of oatmeal raisin cookies, but we substituted the butter for avocado, which I read online that you could do. And I've used like applesauce or Greek yogurt before, but never avocado. So that, um, we'll give them a taste test and I'll let you know. They smell really good and they still have like sugar and flour and. Um, oats and stuff so hopefully they're pretty good and that's kind of gonna wrap up this evening I think I feel like I had something else to say but I forgot I am a little bit tired I got my PJs and stuff on I have to work tomorrow and get up early so I am going to wrap up this video here I really appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch the video um, I hope that it was enjoyable for you. I hope it wasn't too chaotic and disorganized. I definitely didn't take the time to organize my thoughts. I kind of just spewed everything, but I kind of just wanted to move forward, get things out of my head, and then get back to creating regular content here. Um, if you are interested, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. I hope you are having an amazing month, an amazing week. I hope things are going well for you. Have a very Merry Christmas season. It's about to be December, so that's very exciting. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope things are going well for you. Keep going, keep chasing after your goals, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. They are a little bit moist, I would say. We'll just share this one, and they feel quite light. Like they're definitely not a chewy cookie. It's almost more like a, I don't know what, cakey thing. But they do smell delicious and they're green. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. They are really, really good. They're really good. They're quite cakey. They're definitely not like chewy, but chewy like almost gummy, which doesn't sound like a good term, but I would say they're tasty. They taste maybe like a little bit healthy, but still very enjoyable. I, like I would them. give them a 7 out of 10. 7.1. I don't think I've ever had a cookie, though, that ranks lower than a 7, so can't go so wrong with a cookie. cookie? <laughs> no, I mean, it's not the best cookie I've had in my life, but it's very good. It's the best flavor. Mm -hmm. Oatmeal raisin is good and the whole point was just to make a small batch so that we didn't have like a ton to overeat mm. on so we can now sit down and enjoy these. Don't just eat them all standing. You get only two more standing at the counter. Let's go watch something.